Hello everybody, welcome to Sermon on the Go. Today I'm going to talk about how to avoid divorce and my subtitle is The Circle of Responsibility and Mutual Submission. Our test comes from Ephesians chapter 5 verses 22 to 33. Let's hear the reading of God's word. Wives, submit to your own husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, as also Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Therefore, just as the church is subject to Christ, so let wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish, so husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respects her husband. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A Christian wife is not submitting to her husband because he owns her or she is afraid of him. Rather, she is submitting to her husband because he is the head of their relationship. The husband is the head of the marriage just as Christ is the head of the church. Paul's teaching here is not that husbands should dominate their wives. He is saying that husbands are responsible for the well-being, security, and the happiness of their wives and their homes. Jesus Christ's headship of the church is shown by being her savior not her tyrant. There are two reasons for this command, the Lordship of Christ and the Headship of man in Christ. When a Christian wife submit herself to Christ and let him be the Lord of her life, she will have no difficulty submitting to her husband. This does not mean that she becomes a slave because the husband is also to submit to Christ. Therefore, both the husband and the wife are living under the Lordship of Christ. And when the husband and wife are living under the Lordship of Christ, unity and harmony becomes the bedrock of their marriage. The Christian husband and wife should pray together and spend time in the word of God, so that they might know the will of God for their lives and for their home. Most of the marital conflicts I have dealt with as a minister have always stemmed from a failure of the husband and wife to submit to Christ and to spend time in his word and to seek to do his will each day.
in their lives. Unless couples pray together and spend time in daily devotion together and sincerely seek God's will in his word, their marriage is always sitting on a weak foundation. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Therefore, husbands, you are to do your utmost best to lead your family, your wife and children in all righteousness, to protect them and to provide for them. A husband is to love, care for, and serve his wife. Just as Christ bring his church to purity, perfection, and glory, so a husband is to give himself so that his wife may know that she is accepted, liberated, and fulfilled. The Bible sets a very high standard and responsibilities for husbands. In our reading today, Paul is lifting married love to the highest level possible, for he saw in the Christian home an illustration of the relationship between Christ and the church. Marriage was instituted and established by God for many reasons, but I will mention four. First, marriage meets our emotional needs. When God created man from the dust, God said, it is not good that man should be alone. I will make for him a helper comparable for him. Therefore, it is the intention of God for man not to be alone, but to get married and live in union with his wife because marriage meets our emotional needs. Second, marriage has a social purpose to procreate in bearing of children and to continue the human race. In Genesis 1.28, we read, Then God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth. Subdue it and have dominion over it. Therefore, the purpose of marriage is being fruitful, multiplying, filling the earth, subduing it, and having dominion over it. Thirdly, there is a physical purpose for marriage. Sex was given in marriage to help the man and the woman to fulfill their desires given to them by God. The fourth and final one I want to share today is that there is a spiritual purpose to marriage. As the husband and wife experience with each other the submission and the love of Christ in their marriage. Let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself and let the wife see that she respect her husband. Brothers and sisters, in order to avoid divorce, in order to bring the numbers of divorce in our nation down, we need to have selfless commitment in our marriages. We need to deny ourselves in order to enable our marriages to flourish. We need to serve our partners in all humility and sincerity with joy and happiness. This way, our marriages will continue to flourish and our divorce levels will begin to subside. And why do we do all of that? As husbands and wives, we serve each other. We submit to each other. We honor each other for the benefit and for the growth of the children. For the children to grow in an environment 
of unity and harmony. So when they grow, they can also have successful marriages. May the Lord bless us all as we seek to serve our partners in our marriages. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for today and we thank you for the gift of marriage. We thank you for the union and the institution of marriage. Heavenly Father, I bring before you marriages which are struggling. I bring before you marriages where there is conflict, that you will bring unity and harmony, that you will continue to bind couples together as they seek to serve each other in love and harmony. Help us to serve each other in marriages. Help us to deny ourselves and think of the interests of our partners. Help us for our marriages to be successful. Help us to live for one another and to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Friends, don't forget to subscribe and follow me on YouTube. I shall see you on Thursday. Shalom. Peace. <laughs>